So, good morning everyone. We start capsule number 8 today and I have done a little bit of reordering in the capsules mainly because uh, you have an assignment to do on design of a glider for maximum range and maximum endurance. So, therefore, I thought it is important for you to know up front very quickly what are the important features in the design that you would like to incorporate. Okay. The designs for the gliders will be available either online or I can upload uh, the reports which students have uh, submitted. But you need to know a little bit about how to make it stable so that it can fly a long distance along a straight line. So, for that uh, I have to thank Vijay Gaikwad, an intern who came this summer from VJTI Mumbai and uh, helped me prepare the content for this particular presentation in which we will discuss longitudinal stability and neutral point, two important concepts that you will need. So, basically let us see what is the reaction of an aircraft when it is disturbed. So, the aircraft is in trimmed condition, forces are in balance, moments are in balance and now some disturbance acts on that particular aircraft. So, its reaction determines its stability. So, the aircraft is considered to be stable when after disturbing it, it comes back to its initial position without any action of the pilot. If the pilot has to bring it to the condition, it is called as control. But stability means without pilot input on its own. So, therefore, if it does not return to the initial position, then the aircraft can be considered to be unstable, but there is also one step in between called as neutral. So, stability is of two types, there is static instability in which the aircraft departs from the equilibrium. So, it just departs and you also have dynamic instability in which case not only does it depart, it also becomes more and more unstable. Okay. So, the tendency initially is static and the final outcome is dynamic. Okay. Let us have a look. So, in short, if you look at static stability, the first step, it is only a function of the initial reaction, the tendency, not the final outcome, but the initial reaction. As you disturb an aircraft, what is its initial reaction on its own? that determines static stability. So, definition is when you disturb an aircraft from a trimmed position or equilibrium position, if the aircraft tends to return, tends to return, it need not return finally, but at least the tendency is to return, then we call it as a statically stable aircraft. Okay. So, there are three basic types. One can have positive static stability, which is illustrated by uh, this kind of a behavior. So, you have an aircraft on the extreme left, it is disturbed because of which it is pitching up slightly. So, the tendency is it is coming down. Okay. That is the initial tendency. So, this is the positive static stability. Then you have neutral static stability in which case there will be no attempt to either become undisturbed. So, neither will it come back to the position nor will it go away. If it is disturbed, it remains disturbed and remains disturbed. This is called as a neutral st static stability. It will still stable because it is not going away, okay. but it is neutral. The third one is of course, negative static stability. In this case, you will notice that if you disturb it, it goes to a position of disturbance, but then on its own, it goes further away. Then we call it as a negatively static stability. But then why the word stability? Because we do not know what will be in the end. Okay, right. So, let us look at these three steps in some other way. 
okay first is neutral stability so we have a ball on a flat table we push it to a position it goes to that position and remains there you push it towards the left and leave it it remains there this is neutral okay now let us look at positive so this is an example of positive stability you have original state when the ball is at rest at the center you take it to the right and leave it it doesn't go further ahead it comes back but it may exceed the position where it was go to the left and then come back and then go and then come back what eventually happens is a function of dynamic stability but the ball is statically stable because it does not go away further away okay and this is negative stability so you place the ball and now you disturb it slightly it will keep on going further and further away either on this side or on the that side this is unstable okay so these are simple examples but we are concerned about flight not about balls on rotating surfaces so this is a equilibrium flight the aircraft is at some angle of attack though not shown but it is level so no thrust is equal to drag lift is equal to weight if it is a level flight and no net movement you could incline it to make it a climbing flight steady again it will be in equilibrium moments are still in balance although lift is not equal to weight lift is in fact less than weight incline now this is neutral you fly an aircraft you disturb it it remains disturbed and this one is unstable okay so i'll give you an example a small video clip which shows the behavior of an unstable aircraft this is a remotely controlled aircraft it takes off goes into nose up some disturbance comes gone if this aircraft was statically stable then when this pitch up when the pitch down moment came because of the disturbance it would not have just gone down let's see once again observe the motion of the aircraft so it take off is fine it lifts off some disturbance we cannot see there is some disturbance but after that no way of recovery on its own so if the pilot of this aircraft was highly skilled and very quick in reacting he or she could have avoided a crash when the aircraft is pitching down you could have quickly put the elevator and made it pitch up so you can control an aircraft which is statically unstable this is what the right brothers did when they were flying the first aircraft right flyer it was inherently unstable but they were making it stable or they were making it fly by very skillful flight controls okay but you can't expect that from every pilot and therefore we want to make the aircraft sufficiently stable if you make it too stable then the pilot has to really work very hard to do any control that's also not desirable okay so we need stability but we need adequate amount of stability we don't need the plane to be too stable and obviously we don't want the plane to be unstable so both extremes are bad so much about static stability i'll just sum up once again static stability is basically only the intention or the initial tendency of the aircraft to respond to disturbance on its own if the initial response of the aircraft is such that it tends to come back to the undisturbed position it is statically stable if the response is that it doesn't either come back or go away it's neutral if the response is it wants to go further away it is unstable statically now let's come to dynamically so whereas in static stability the intention or the initial tendency is the only consideration in dynamic stability we want finally the aircraft to come back actually to the original position on its own so not just intention not just tendency but actually coming back so the final outcome 
of disturbing an aircraft depends on its dynamic stability. The initial response depends on static stability. So, let us see. So, an aircraft is going to be positive in dynamic stability if the oscillations after disturbance reduce in amplitude with time. Okay. So, and the extent by which they reduce is the extent of dynamic stability. If the oscillations damp out very fast, it is highly dynamically stable. If the oscillations do not damp out, okay, then it is neutrally stable. If the oscillations increase, it is unstable. If the oscillations damp but slowly, it is less dynamically stable. Okay. So, you can see in this case, you have an aircraft going in level flight, there is a nose down pitching moment. So, it tends to come up that means, it is statically stable, but it overshoots again down, again up, again down finally, it comes to the original position after a period of time. Hence, it is having positive dynamic stability. In neutral, once again the oscillations are same in the magnitude in the in the amplitude. So, you disturb the aircraft, it oscillates but it does not either come down or go up, it remains. This is neutrally stable. It is stable because it is not unstable. That is why we say stable. And obviously, unstable or negative stability is when the oscillations are going to worsen, increase further with time. Now, how do you control this aircraft? Only by pilot intervention. You can still fly this aircraft, but you will need constant and regular pilot intervention. In today's modern aircraft, you might be able to control the aircraft by automatic flight control, which senses the position of the aircraft, senses the moments acting on it and deflects the control surfaces automatically. Okay. So, you can do that. So, a quick summary is basically given by this small video. You can actually make out by looking. will actually nose down even further. So that a static stability, dynamic stability is the overall tendency for the aircraft to get back to its initial flight path. A dynamically stable aircraft will eventually return to the flight path after a few oscillations. A dynamically neutral aircraft will carry on oscillating like some horrendous roller coaster. A dynamically unstable aircraft will carry on oscillating but with increasingly large oscillations, which will probably. Okay, so this is a quick summary. Remember, this video on YouTube is actually 7 minutes long. So, what you have seen is only a small clip. It is a very detailed video which talks about stability, static, dynamic, longitudinal, lateral, all stabilities and it gives, it is a very, very detailed video. I will uh, request you to watch it as a self study, but our concern right now is only this. Now, obviously, when you are going to take part in the competition, you would like to have a stable aircraft because you do not have any control on it. It is a glider and you are not remotely flying it nor you are sitting in the aircraft to fly it. Once you throw it, okay, whether you use a rubber band to throw or whether you use hand to throw, that is up to you. I have not mentioned, but I am allowing you to do anything. But when you launch it, it is gone. After that, its behavior will depend only on its stability characteristics. So, therefore, you cannot and some people might have got an idea, let us make the aircraft neutrally stable dynamically, so that when we throw, it will go up and down, up and down, up and down, it will spend more time in the air, we might win the endurance flight. Okay, this some people have tried this, but try it out at your own risk, because if that does not happen, the plane will simply crash and you will get neither long distance nor long endurance. Okay. So, it will be safer for you and a good idea for you to make the aircraft adequately stable. 
not too much stable. Now, if you want to have a flight of maximum range, actually the aircraft has three kinds of stability, stability in pitch, stability in roll, stability in yaw. So obviously you want the aircraft to be stable in all of them. But our syllabus does not cover the other three type of, other two types of stabilities. I will just give you a very brief idea. If you perfectly balance the aircraft, if both the wings are equal weight or when you hold the aircraft it does not have a tendency of imbalance, it may not roll, okay. it may not do this. Remember if the aircraft rolls it will not fly straight because we have seen in the last lecture rolling and yawing are coupled. So if your plane starts rolling and you do not have any control, it will definitely yaw. If your pain starts yawing, it will also roll slightly. So you have to design your plane so that it does not roll, it does not yaw, only then you can throw on a straight line and hit the pillar because any deviation is going to be subtracted. So what you have to do is, from the point of view of yaw stability, the only thing you can do is when you throw, you ensure that it flies straight, it does not have any inbuilt imbalance. So the vertical tail should be perfectly centered to the, if you use one vertical tail, if you use two of them then they should be equidistant and they should be perfectly aligned. That is all you can do and of course the lateral balance. But if you want the aircraft not to roll, you have to bring in some roll stability and that I leave it to you how to figure out, how to make it stable in roll. But I will teach you today how to make your aircraft stable in longitudinal motion so that when you throw. It does not go up and then down or it does not go down, it flies fairly straight. Okay. Obviously tell me one thing, how will you get maximum range for a given, for a given amount of throwing capacity? What is the condition that you will try to implement? Right, you have to throw it at an angle or you have to make the aircraft act with the wings fixed at an angle so that when you throw horizontally, the angle of attack of the aircraft is corresponding to maximum L by D. How do you know that? You might get the angle for maximum CL by CD for an aerofoil from the data, but how about the aircraft? So it is not easy. Okay. But at least you should be sure that your aircraft flies fairly straight. So let us see how you make to do it. The whole game is basically about these three centers. Okay? There are three centers in aircraft design and these three centers have to be located with respect to each other in a specific relative position. Okay. So, the first one is center of gravity. The center of gravity obviously you know is the place where the moments on the aircraft are acting because its weight act on it. So, normally we take the moments about center of gravity. One reason is that the heaviest item of the aircraft is the aircraft weight. So, if you balance, you can do about any point actually, it is not a problem. But normally as a convention, we always balance moment about center of gravity. So there is one point. Now these three locations you do not worry right now. We will very soon see the relative location. So this depends only on mass distribution. So this can be controlled by you by adding mass, deleting mass. You can control the CG position. It does not depend upon the aerodynamics. Although the shape of the wing will affect its CG slightly. Similarly, how long is your fuselage, how large is the tail, all that will affect the center of gravity, what material do you use, but fairly controllable with you. The next one is the center of pressure. The center of pressure is the point where the resulting aerodynamic forces are applied. These forces are the forces of lift and drag. And it depends on the model's aerodynamics and on the angle of attack. So now this is interesting. 
the location of the center of pressure or the place where the net lift is acting or the net the reaction of the wing is acting that particular point will depend upon two things at what angle you are flying and what are the forces acting on it. Now controlling the angle of attack at which you fly is very difficult and even if you throw it by some kind of a launcher you know 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree makes a big difference. So it will be necessary and interesting for us if we can somehow remove the dependency on the angle of attack. Would it not be nice if the aerodynamic forces and moments could become independent of the angle of attack? So one variable gone. Okay. So let us see what it is. The third important point is called as, so let us see now the center of pressure. Center of pressure you know it is going to change. So, it depends as I said on the aerodynamic um, force, it changes with the angle of attack. So, the center of pressure is the average location of the pressure, it varies around the object and numerically if you want you have to take the integral of the elemental force acting on, spe elemental pressure acting on specific on small areas into the distance from the nose or a relative point upon the sigma of the pressure. Okay. But this is not of much use to us because it changes with the angle of attack. Okay. Then we have a neutral point, the third point. This is a reference point for which the pitching moment does not depend on the angle of attack. Right? Then this depends only on the aircraft geometry, not on the aerodynamics, not on the center of gravity but only on the external geometry. Again this is a point which is very difficult to determine. It is difficult to do calculations and say I calculate and hence NP is here. Okay. So the location of center of pressure or aerodynamic forces is not in your control. It depends upon angle of attack, depends on what speed you throw and the aerodynamic coefficients of your aircraft. So you might copy an aerofoil very accurately, but how do you do the calculations for the fuselage, for the tail etc. it is not easy. Interestingly, individual values are not important, the relative location is important. Okay. So the neutral point is another uh, good definition of that would be, it is that place if the CG comes to neutral point, the aircraft becomes neutrally stable. So obviously if it goes behind, it will be unstable, which you do not want. But are you okay with a neutrally stable plane? Are you okay? No. No, because a slight discomfort or a slight miscalculation will make it unstable. So it is better to be in the stable domain, but do not make it too stable because then it will not be recovering. Okay. So there is a very good book by an author called Andy Lennon on the basics of remote control model aircraft design. We have a copy of this book in our departmental library, it is also available in the institute library and soft copies are available online. So I recommend for those of you who are serious about designing your plane, it is a very good book to give you basic ideas. It also contains some sample designs which are good well flying glider designs. So you can actually borrow from there, you can copy from there. Okay. So let us see now all three together, but we now have a fourth center also and that is the aerodynamic center or the AC as we call it. So what is this AC? AC is basically a theoretical point. Okay. It is not a practical point, it is a theoretical point such that the effect of angle of attack or 
the effect of the aerodynamic moment on the angle of attack is removed. So, the aerodynamic moment remains same at all angle of attack about the aerodynamic center. Center of pressure moves, generally it moves back, okay. If you have a flight which is supersonic, it may even move forward because it is a function of pressure distribution. But now we are not bothered. Whatever be the pressure distribution, there is some lift, there is some drag, there is some moment. So, the moment does not change about the aerodynamic center. So, at all angle of attack, you have the same moment. So, that is the beauty of this theoretical center called as the aerodynamic center. Interestingly, if you take a flat plate or a very thin aerofoil, the approximate location of this particular place, theoretical place is one fourth of the chord. So, if you want to do a very quick and simple design and if you want the aircraft to fly, you should try to adjust your center of gravity near the quarter chord of the wing because that is where the aerodynamic center is. Now, I will show you how to decide the exact location, okay. So, we will take a toy plane, I will be, do, be doing, I will be doing two experiments in the class. One is not an experiment, but a demonstration using only sketches, a toy plane. So, these are basically figures taken from a textbook and this textbook by the way, a very interesting textbook by Professor Eberhardt and Anderson. Professor Eberhardt was a visiting professor in our department for one semester in 2011. He worked uh, in the Boeing company for many years and then he joined Washington University and then he now travels all over the world taking up assignments as a visiting professor. So, he has, he was in Spain, he was in Australia, so now he has gone to some other location, okay. He has written a very nice book along with D. F. Anderson. This is not the same Anderson that you know, this is some other Anderson. So, Anderson and Eberhardt, one of the best books to understand the basics of flight. In my opinion, even far better than Anderson. Available online just by a simple Google search, copies are available. In fact, I have an autograph copy also by Professor Eberhardt, but we have in our departmental library as well as in the main library. I recommend all of you to go through this book and I borrowed this particular uh, example from his textbook using a toy plane. So, here is a toy plane. Now, this toy plane assume that through some magic, I am throwing it in the air and it is in equilibrium at some condition, okay. And now some disturbance acts on it because of atmospheric disturbances whatever and there is a nose up pitching moment. But before we go ahead, let us first look at the forces acting on this aircraft. So, as we see the point marked by cross is the neutral point. How do you find it? You cannot find it it is not easy to find it, but it is there. In this example, as is typically the case, the lift of the wings acts slightly ahead of the neutral point. The center of gravity is far ahead, okay. So, the center of gravity is far ahead of the neutral point. Now, what will happen tell me, oh, so what tell me, why do we have the tail loads and the uh, in the way it is shown. So, take moments about center of gravity, lift alone is going to give you a nose down pitching moment, but I said the aircraft is in equilibrium. Therefore, the tail has to carry a down load. Now, why is the load on the tail much smaller? Because it is far away from CG. It is the moment that is important, not the force because we are trying to take moments about CG. So, this aircraft will fly in a trim condition only when the moments about CG are 0. 
So, in this condition the lift force into that distance is equal to and opposite to the tail force and the tail distance of the tail uh, aerodynamic center from the center of gravity. So, something like L w into x w equal to L t into x t and there is no net moment. So, therefore, about center of gravity you have some net lift which is the brown vertical line which is the lift of the wing minus tail and the total weight of the aircraft is w they are both equal balance opposite and hence this aircraft is in trimmed horizontal flight. Now, for some reason there is a perturbation in the flight because of which the angle of attack increases. So, what will happen as the alpha increases and if the alpha is below alpha stall then the lift will increase. So, as the angle of attack increases the lift is going to increase. So, the nose down pitching moment is going to be created because of the delta L. But what will happen to the angle of attack of the tail? If the aircraft was at some angle in trimmed condition and the tail had negative load that means tail was deflected little bit down and now the alpha is increased what is going to be the angle of attack of the tail? It is going to decrease little bit. So, if it decreases its lift will not remain the same. Therefore, the tail down moment created by the tail will be lower than the nose down moment created by the wing. So, we disturb the aircraft, we created a angle of attack which means the nose went up, but the nose will come down because the nose down moment is more than the tail down moment. So, what can you say about this aircraft? This is positively stable or stable, but we can only count upon the static stability. We do not know what will happen in the end, but at least the tendency is to come down. In other words, when the center of gravity is ahead of the neutral point, then we have a situation when the aircraft is stable. Now, one more question I want to ask you. Suppose I move the center of gravity further by adding a weight in the nose. Now, what will happen to the aircraft? Will it become more stable or less stable? Who will answer this question? More stable, less stable, none of the above, unstable, I do not care. Yeah. I do not want to hear I do not care. So, tell me, will it become more stable or less stable? More stable? Why will it become more stable? Because the nose down movement will be further. But remember, even the tail also will have a longer tail arm. But the numerical value of the lift is far more than the tail. So, if you give more momentum, larger force with that delta x will give you more moment than a smaller force with that delta x. Agreed? Manikanda not happy? Okay. okay. So, if you move CG forward, it will be more stable and more stable and more stable. Correct? Let us see now when CG is moved behind and it is at neutral point, it is at neutral point now. So, when the CG is at neutral point, the wing is still such that its lift will be acting slightly ahead of the CG. Now, it is ahead of the CG because the location of the lift on the wing is a function of the wing geometry and the wing location. We have not changed the wing location. I did not move the wing behind, I just move the CG behind. 
so the wing lift will now give you a nose up moment and the tail has to have upload to cancel that because I am saying that the aircraft is flying in a steady level flight even in this condition. So, when the CG is at NP and the aircraft is still in a stable flight, now the position of aerodynamic center does not depend upon angle of attack, okay. So, it remains the same place. So, as the angle of attack increases, lift on the wing will go up, but the tail lift will also increase and because it is neutrally, because uh, the two moments are going to balance, your CG is at neutral point, therefore there will be no restoring torque. So therefore, this aircraft is neutrally stable because the moments are balanced. As alpha increases, it increases both for tail and for the wing. Okay. Now, let us look at the situation when the CG is behind neutral point. So, now when the nose pitches up, the increase in the lift on the wing will be more than that on the tail. You have to tell me why. Why will the delta L wing be more than delta L tail. Both will increase because alpha has increased, but why is it so that change in the lift of the wing is more than the change in the lift of the tail? Let me give you a hint. Suppose we assume the same aerofoil for both because aerofoils can be different. So, just to remove that confusion, both have the same aerofoil. Therefore, the DCL by D alpha is same, change in the CL with change in the angle of attack is same. So, it is not because of any change in the lift coefficient. What is the reason? Because the surface area of the wing is more. Okay, I would like to hear not surface area but reference area. Yeah, yes. That is one reason, wing is larger in size, reference area is larger. Any other, any other reason? Take a theoretical case when both have the same surface area, still I will say wing has going to, going to have more. The reason is actually the aspect ratio of the tail is normally kept lower than that of the wing. And because of that also you will get higher lift. Fine. So, when you have larger lift from the wing, then the nose will pitch up further. So, now you will not have restoring moment, you will actually have imbalance moment. The nose of the aircraft has gone up, it will tend to go up and tend to go up and tend to go up. So, therefore, the aircraft is unstable. So, it is very straightforward. The relative location of the center of gravity and the neutral point is what decides the stability in longitudinal direction. If CG is ahead of neutral point, the aircraft is stable. At neutral point, neutrally stable. Behind neutral point, unstable. The farther behind, more unstable. The farther ahead, more stable. But we forgot there is another position that the third center is there. Yes, you have a question. Neutral point is a theoretical point. Okay. It is difficult to explain it as a physical quantity like center of gravity we say oh where the net weight acts. So, it has a physical significance. Center of pressure there is a physical significance that is the center of the pressure which acts. But aerodynamic center and neutral points do not have any physical significance. These are some theoretical points. Okay. So, you, you can just assume that there is a point called a neutral point. 
its location depends on the geometry of the aircraft such that if the CGS is at ahead of that point the aircraft is laterally dynamically sorry uh, longitudinally stable. If the CG is behind it is unstable, if the CG is exactly there it is neutrally stable. This is how you define neutral point ok. There is no other significance. Similarly, aerodynamic center is a theoretical point at which the moments are going to be the same at any angle of attack. Lift and drag forces will change. Yes, it is a location on the aircraft, but you cannot say you can calculate it in this manner. CG you can calculate, you can say take any point, take moments ahead, take moments behind, if this is more move, 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 move till moments are equal. But aerodynamic center and neutral point are not such quantities, they are derived quantities ok. Is it answer your question? No, no that is not the reason, the reason is the third one which I am going to come now. The aircraft is stable depending on the relative location of the CG and neutral point, CG ahead stable, CG behind unstable, but it assumes that the aerodynamic center is between, between the CG and neutral point. If the aerodynamic center is ahead of CG or behind neutral point the things go haywire. So, that is why we need to now look at the location of the aerodynamic center also ok. So, the first one is CG ahead of neutral point and ahead of aerodynamic center that is the point which I have circled ok. Now, location of center of gravity of the aircraft by the way this is not about wing center of gravity huh? this is the aircraft center of gravity interesting point. So, typically the center of gravity of the aircraft lies somewhere on the wing ok. It will be rarely a situation when the center of gravity of the aircraft is behind the wing and ahead of the wing, it is on the wing somewhere. So, what we do is the center of gravity location, when I say when I say CG location I am talking only about longitudinal, all our discussion is only about longitudinal no lateral and no roll right now. So, the longitudinal CG location of the aircraft is somewhere on the wing. So, normally we express it in terms of the percentage of a term called as the mean aerodynamic chord. What is the chord you know? Chord is the distance between the nose radius and the tail radius correct or the tail junction, but the wing is not always of the same chord. The chord can reduce, it may even increase. There are aircraft in which the chord at the center of the wing is less than at the tips. Have you seen such an aircraft? Ok, there are. So, why do not you locate and put on Moodle picture of an aircraft in which the root chord is less than the tip chord and not just search, explain why, is there an advantage of doing that because nobody will build an aircraft with a configuration unless there is some advantage. So, this is an interesting assignment, find out aircraft where the tip chord is more than the root chord and explain the reason and why do not we see it very often, why do we typically see that the tip chord is equal to root chord or less than the root chord ok. So, therefore, in general the chord changes along the span. So, therefore, we define one particular chord called as a mean aerodynamic chord. It is not a geometric mean, but it is a aerodynamic mean. There is a formula, now that goes into aerodynamics, we will not get into that. Assume that there is some way to calculate the mean aerodynamic chord. So, the center of gravity of the aircraft is going to locate along the mean aerodynamic chord at some location. So, we normally call it as percentage of MAC 5 percent, 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent. Please understand the mean aerodynamic chord may be larger than the chord at the root or smaller, we do not know. So, this is just an illustration. So, to avoid confusion, assume that the aircraft has got the same chord throughout a rectangular wing, no confusion. Now, the MAC is equal to the C. 
at the root. So, the CG will be located at some position, we measure it in terms of the percentage of the MAC. So, there are some examples here 5 percent, 25 percent, 35 percent, 40 percent, 45 percent ok and we want to see what happens. So, the first one is if the aerodynamic center which is typically at quarter chord not always, but typically at quarter chord and if the CG is at 5 percent of the MAC then the aircraft is very very stable because the CG is far ahead of the aerodynamic center neutral point is behind. We do not know where it is right now, but aerodynamic center also it is far ahead. So, this condition is a condition where you have a saucer and a steel ball exactly as a center highly stable ok, undesirable not desirable. Then we have CG at aerodynamic center. So, progressively we will move the CG behind first was 5 percent. Now, CG is at 25 percent, it is above aerodynamic center or at aerodynamic center, neutral point is behind. In this example, neutral point is at 35 percent of MAC, just happens to be, you do not know how to calculate it, it happens to be. So, what will happen now? Will the aircraft be stable, unstable, neutrally stable? Stable? Sure, it is stable. Why is it stable? Because I had a neutral point, that is it, it is stable. And this, my friends, is a very desirable location for the CG of your aircraft, approximately quarter chord. ok. Let us move it behind. The aircraft moves behind aerodynamic center, but still ahead of aerodynamic, uh, still ahead of neutral point. The aircraft is stable because NP is still behind, but the level of stability is now reducing because you are moving towards neutral point. The moment you go behind the dynamic center, your CG is going to be, uh, your stability is going to be less. For you and your glider, it is an undesirable condition. Your glider will still fly, but not fly well it is less stable, but still stable, but less stable. Now, let us say take the CG behind AC, behind AC at neutral point, it will be neutrally stable. Now, this is the most rear position of CG, which is acceptable for flight. I would say we do not want to go so back. In a practical aircraft, we never fly at neutral point or even near it, we are sufficiently ahead of it, but behind this is disaster ok. Ahead of this is better, best will be at aerodynamic center, but here it is neutrally stable. Once you go behind, then you are unstable ok, all right. Now, this was a theoretical exercise. So, this is in summary the position. Okay. So, now I want to show you the results of a practical experiment. So, as I mentioned to you during this summer we had some students who came to do internship, but before them we had two students who came and worked with us on their undergraduate project. These students came from an institute called IIST, one of them is sitting right here, Sushil. He did his BTEC project along with his friend and in their BTEC project, they worked on a very interesting problem. They worked on the design of a glider, which I used to go to schools and colleges to demonstrate principle of flight. So, his friend Vishwas Mauli and Sushil they worked on these two. The other one was launching by hand is going to bring lot of variability correct. Every time I throw it will be a bit different because my angle is not fixed. So, they designed a launcher and a glider. The glider that they designed was basically a very simple glider I will show you now. So, after they left 
I am sure you are wondering. After they left, we did some further experiments using their glider and their launcher. So, I want to now present to you the results of those experiments. There are two experiments here. One experiment is what is the effect of change in the center of gravity of the aircraft on the flight characteristics of a glider. But this is not a, not a, not a hand launch glider, this is a launcher launch glider. So, it will have much better variability. So, the relative changes will be less. The other experiment is effect of angle of attack of launch on flight. Okay. So, let us see. So, this is the glider that was made. Okay. You have a top view and a bottom view. In the bottom view, we have drawn some lines. These lines are the location of some payload that we have put to adjust the center of gravity. So, this aircraft will have some center of gravity location on its own because of its geometry. But if you want to play with the CG, you have to add weight. I cannot delete weight because then I will have to destroy my glider. I can only do CG change by adding weight. So, some screws have been added. Okay. So, the first position of center of gravity on the left hand side, you will see the position of the payload or the screw. On the right hand side, you will see what is the CG location because of that. So, this is position number 1, which was slightly ahead of the aerodynamic center. Okay. So, let us see position number 2, we move the payload little bit behind, CG has gone slightly ahead of the aerodynamic center. Third position, the CG is at aerodynamic center. Fourth one, CG is behind aerodynamic center, and the fifth one is horrible. The CG is now behind the neutral point. You can see the CG is behind the wing. Now, I do not know where neutral point is, and nor can I find out. I told you, I cannot find out neutral point, but I can find out the CG. So, by putting the weight at the fuselage on the rear side, we ensured that the CG is so much behind that it is behind their wing. I know that normally the, aerodynamic, the neutral point is you know 35 40 percent, it is now 100 percent behind the wing. So, I am very sure that the neutral point has been exceeded. Okay. So, now I want to show you the effect. Okay. So, this one, the payload is here, the CG is here and let us see the flight. This is in slow motion, okay. it is in slow motion because it flies very fast. So, if I do not make it slow, you will not be able to really see how the aircraft behaves. So, can you comment on the flight? Is it flying straight? Yes or no? No or yes? I mean, you cannot say. I would say it flies straight, 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 and then here it starts going down. Okay. So initial flight path is fairly straight. And then is the aircraft flying stably? Yes. Where is the disturbance? Stable, unstable is only if you disturb it. Na? Did I disturb it? I did not disturb it, correct. So, if she does not disturb an aircraft, you cannot say it is stable. So, right now we cannot comment on stability. We can only comment on whether the flight is good or not. Now, good or bad is a relative term. This is the first video you are seeing. So, hang on. Comment at the end of the fifth flight. This is the first flight. So, what do we observe? The plane leaves, the launcher is not visible, we have hidden it out of the camera and we have put this black background okay, for increase. We also have a software, an open source software through which we can track this object. I will show you the result of that little bit ahead. Okay, enough of 
the flight wet first CG location. This is the tracked or recovered trajectory from the software. So, as I said from a location around 20 from the wall which was the starting position, it flies straight up to around 320 sorry up to around 270 or so. Okay. This is not meters or inches, this is just some frames and then it starts going down. So, its range will be approximately 600 in this figure, right? approximately 600 by projecting it. We do not know, but approximately 600. All right. Now, let us see what happens if I in number 2, I have moved the CG slightly behind. Okay. It is little bit ahead of the aerodynamic center. I am telling you because of past of by this is post facto information, you do not know right now, but we just move CG behind. Is it better or is it worse than the previous one? There is a slight amount of roll introduced, do not worry about it. This class is not about lateral stability or rolling stability, this class is about longitudinal stability. So, is this flight better or worse? We have moved the CG slightly behind, but still ahead of aerodynamic center. Worse, why do you say it is worse? I think it is better. What is the measurement of better or worse? range not how it flies. We are competing for max. Did I say if your aircraft goes like this and hits the pillar there is no mark? Did I say that? No. Your aim is to travel maximum distance and hit the pillar. So, I think it is better. How do you know it is better? Not by looking at the video, but by track trajectory. So, now what we see is it was earlier flying almost straight and then down it will go down, it is a glider, it cannot go up unless some gust comes in, there is no gust here. So, this particular flight is actually slightly better. Hmm? Let us not argue, you may say it is worse, I accept it, if you say better I accept it, but I found it better simply because we got little bit more range in this. Okay? Because see, it is going up slightly, so whatever goes up will also come down and it will go longer. So, you got slightly more range. Okay. Now, let us go to location number 3. In location number 3, the CG is now at aerodynamic center. What do you say now? Better? So, if you are designing your glider, and competing for maximum range, what will you do? 1 or 2 or 3? Three? 3? Yes, you can see by the trajectory also that the aircraft it now climbs further up, goes down. The range we got was more in this case. Okay. You can see surely more than 600, although I wish I would have captured it. See what happens is when you capture with the camera, there is a software. So, it captures that to some point and then if there are some table or something else, it loses. So, we lose it. So, this is the data, this is actual data of our captured trajectory. Okay. Let us see what happens if we move the CG further behind to position number 4. Behind the center, behind the quarter cord, this is not good. The range was not larger in this case.
you can see less than 600 ok. Now, we take the worst case which is when the neutral point has been crossed. So, the aircraft should actually be unstable in this case, but here stability and stability is not going to really matter. What will matter is what angle the aircraft takes or what angle the aircraft trims into when you launch it. So, although you get very high initial climb, but the range is not highest. So, this is what happens. You can imagine now, it is like the tail is heavy. So, when you throw the aircraft, angle is increasing. When the angle increases, drag is more. So, when drag is more you, with the same energy, you are not able to travel much longer distance. So, you go like this and then you fall down. So, the range in fact was the least in this case, 500. So, in short, here is a comparison of all the ranges with the various CG positions. So, you can see that this black dots which represent CG at 3 which was we know at aerodynamic center gave us the maximum range. So, this is a experimental proof of what we learnt through a toy aeroplane from Scott Everhart's book and this is my friends a hint to you to get now the difference will be now all of you will put the CG at quarter chord. So, now who will win the one which has got better aerodynamics, the one which has got better repeatability, so that you do not disturb. Remember we will take average of two throws, so after one throw if it breaks gone ok. So, you have to I will not take the actually I will not take the best of two throws, no I want the design to be robust. So, if your plane breaks after first throw, then you have only one reading ok. If your plane performs bad after second throw, it is actually a bad design. Some people will say we will break the plane after first throw, because where you get negative marks, it is up to you, you take a call alright. This is our conclusion ok. Now, why did this happen? There is no stability in this calculation because there is no disturbance. So, it is not to do with stability. So, what is it to do with? If you have listened carefully and if you have listened carefully to what I have shown you today, then you should be able to answer. So, why is it so that at position number 3, CG at number 3 position? we had the maximum range. Let me help you by saying apart from the center of gravity location, what was the difference in the flights of each aircraft? Remember one minute. Remember, we have attached the aircraft to the launcher and released it. Now, tell me, yes, what is your comment? Okay. He says that the angle of attack of the aircraft during the flights was different. How many of you agree? There are three people here, three musketeers, only two there. So, others are thinking angle of is same in all flights, why is it same? Because the weight is same and the launch angle is same, so the angle of attack is same. Is it different or is it same? It is different ok. So, you say it is different. How many of you say that the angle of attack of the aircraft in the flights is the same? The logic is very simple the angle of attack will because lift is equal to weight in all of them. Assuming the launch speeds are same which I expect because it is a very good launcher. 
So, and the angle is same. The angle at which the launcher has been launched, we have not touched it, we have locked it. So, they are all going at the same angle from the launcher, they are all same weight because the same weight is moved backward and forward, CG has moved, but the W is same. So, why should the angle be changing? L is equal to half rho V square SCL. Why should the angle change? So, why is the angle of attack changing? Behind neutral point. Correct. So, basically the aircraft is the same, but the angle at which it trims itself when left in flight is automatic because moments have to balance. So, the moments will balance at a higher angle of attack when the CG is far behind. So, therefore, the alpha at which they are flying is not the same. So, is the V same? The V is also not same because V will have to adjust automatically to keep lift equal to weight because angle is changing. So, although this video recording has been showed you in slow motion, the speeds are not the same, they are slightly different. So, now at which angle of attack do you get the best range? the angle of attack at which L by D is maximum. So, that is what is happening. So, this is a graph of the L by D versus alpha. Okay. So, at alpha 1 we had some angle of some L by D. At alpha 2 we had some L by D, at alpha 3 we had the best L by D, at alpha 4 we had less, alpha 5 was the worst. So, that is why at 3 I get the maximum range. So, on the left hand side we have the flight, flight profiles, on the right side we have the corresponding alpha positions, yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It is not the launch angle, the launch angle is same for all. The line that you are seeing is the line for CL by CD max for various alpha. The red line in the figure is the value of CL by CD for this aircraft for various alphas. So, Because the aircraft will automatically because of center of gravity orient with the flight path at an angle at which the moments are cancelled or balanced. So, it will fly at this condition throughout. Now, you cannot see the flight, you cannot see the arrows of flight direction and the angle of attack. So, that is why you cannot see, but the angle between them is the constant in the entire flight. Once the aircraft leaves the launcher. Look at the flight number 5, what happened when you launched it, it became like this. Now, it went like this only, right. So, if you draw a line which is the trajectory and if you draw a tangent to the flight path, you will find the angle is the same. So, what is happening is the aircraft is flying at different angle of attacks at which L bodies are different. So, the same aircraft is having a different range, okay. So, now let us look at the neutral point. So, now I want to show you the effect of the effect of stability. So, far it is no stability. So, first position, now I introduce vertical gust which is a disturbance. Now, you have to see the response of the aircraft after the gust and then decide which is more stable. So, the same flight,
the first one and now what we have done is we have put a small disturbance we have put a small fan so you can see behind the fan the aircraft responds in fact here the response is happening even before the flight slightly because this fan is not giving me just a clear vertical gust it is not giving me a stepped gust the fan is actually going to give me a band a fan of air so the effect will be highest just above the fan at this point so the aircraft responds beyond that remember this is a slow motion recording so once the aircraft crosses the fan now look at the response okay this is when the cg is at number 1 position let's see cg now i have skipped 2 i am just trying to save some time so at number 3 without gust with gust you can now see the difference in the stability so it responded but responded little bit less see now the air hits it okay let's see so there is a difference in the flight this arrow vertical arrow shows the place where the fan is placed so it shows you that behind that there is a slight dip and increase in the flight okay let's look now at position number 4 first without the gust now with the gust the gust acts now the aircraft responds to it so now what is happening is unfortunately these experiments we have to do them little bit with more care because you are actually going so much above the fan that its effect is getting depleted but still you see the reaction there is a continuous increase even here because this fan is not going to give only a straight line like this it is going to give a band of air so i think if you see the response of the aircraft it starts falling here so i would assume that this area is being affected by the fan okay and let's see now the response when you are behind so now this aircraft is unstable because it's there you go the moment you throw angle of attack becomes very large and then it immediately starts descending but when you put vertical gust let us see what happens i would say not much effect because the air is not able to reach but if you see the data that we captured so instead of coming down it is actually going little bit the angle at which it is falling is reducing slightly okay. so these are experiments we tried then we have flights at different angle of attacks so i'll show you quickly now here we have given the alpha yes hmm. yes most stable position yeah no least it will be the least so response should increase yes the effect the effect of the gust should be more unfortunately it is flying so much above that by the time you reach there the the numerical value of the gust is not the same 
I want to show you also the effect of angle of attack very briefly. Now you can see the launcher also. This is zero angle of attack, so therefore you saw it went exactly straight in the beginning. Okay. These are results taken by you, right? Ah, these are the recordings by, by him and his friend. You will see them also. Now alpha at 4 degrees. Eight degrees. Range is lower. Twelve degrees. Range is lower. L by D is going to be maximum at one particular angle. That is not 8 degree or 12 degree, but at a lower degree, approximately 3 to 4 degree. So that is where you will get the maximum range. Okay, so if you compare the flights, this is from their paper. If you compare the flights, you find that in this case, the maximum range came for actually 0 degree. But the next angle we had was only 4 degrees. So maybe at 3 degree or something like that, maybe we could have got a good one. And you see a horizontal line on the ground, that is because of the sliding on the ground of the glider. After falling, it slides. So that gets recorded. All right. So that's all I had for stability and control.